I know some of you went fairly rapidly to a solution, which is great if you've encountered something like this before, but actually I'm far less interested in, like this is a category of problems that you will start to see a fair bit of, and you're like, oh, great. Actually, it's the thinking that I'm really interested in and the use of geometric reasoning, which is not the point of like the answer, but it is the point of the question. Let me say that again. The geometric reasoning is the point of the question because we want you to think about what is this shape here? I think most of you pretty rapidly worked out it is a modulus that's consistent around a particular point. In other words, a circle. Um, what is that particular point, by the way? Root 2 plus root 2i because you could have written this as, and I hope some of you did, uh, minus root 2 plus root 2i. So that clarifies what the reference point is. Uh, these locus questions often have one or two reference points that matter and then you fix them in place and everything sort of orbits around them, quite literally sometimes. The actual answer you produce is just going to be um, a range for mod z, and it's just going to be a range for arg z. We are not asking you to construct a, a long 15 page proof for every reason here, but if you do not have that reasoning clear in your head, and I saw it as I walked around and had a look, some of you are like, how did you even get that answer? Like the numbers are fine, but, but why? Okay. So here's what we're going to do. If you're content that this circle is the locus you get from this equation. Let's take these one at a time. The modulus is significantly easier than the argument, but the argument is not too hard if you know what direction to look in. We want to find the greatest and least values of mod z. What does that mean? z can be anywhere on the circumference of this circle. It can float around and anywhere on this circumference will satisfy this point because they're all one unit away from our reference point here. Okay. But obviously, some of these z's are further from the origin than others. So to look for the greatest and least value means I want the z that's the furthest away from the origin, and I want the z that's the closest. That's all that means. Okay, so we can see through the notation to understand what's being asked of us. At this point, I hope several of you drew an array from the origin and slicing right through, see if I can aim, there we go, right through the center of the circle because this shows to you, and I hope your diagram is good enough, if it's not good enough, not big enough to see what's going on here, then maybe re consider redrawing your diagram or drawing a bigger one next time. You've got these two spots here, one and two, which are respectively the uh, closest and furthest points Z can be from the origin. Does that make sense? So really then all that follows is find the modulus of this, find the modulus of that, that's your particular range. How do I? Do that. How do I find the modulus of these points? Go ahead, Anka. So we know that the center coordinate is root two comma root two. Mm -hmm. So we find the length from the origin to the center. So you're looking for this distance here? Yes. Yes, fantastic. So just carry on. You said uh, root two plus root two i. So help us out, guys. Like Anka's given you on a silver plate. What's the piece of knowledge we use to get to that length? Pythagoras. That's just Pythagoras, right? So we know that distance is? Uh, two. two. It's two. And then where do we go from there? We just add one to get the maximum. Mm -hmm. That's the radius. And we subtract one to get the Yeah, perfect. Okay. So we know, we know what this distance is, right? And we know what our two least and greatest points are for the modulus based on their distance from the center. They should be one from the center, so you just add and subtract. So be, being that this is a two, that means if you go backwards one unit, this spot must be how far from the origin? That's one, isn't it? So you could put that right there, that's one. And then if you went the whole distance, it'd be two plus one. So that's three. So I guess the way we would say that is the range for mod z is between one and three. You okay with that? That's the least and greatest values. Fantastic. Now I did say that was the easy part. Now we need to do the slightly trickier bit. Uh, and this is where this property is going to come into play. All right? um, I had some of you, I was watching and having a look at the constructions you were making. I had some of you say, well, I'm trying to do the same thing. I'm trying to find Z can move around, right? And depending on where it moves, you will get different values for the argument, right? If you go here, it's like, well, have your angle of rotation up here. If you go over there, you have your angle of rotation, so on. So arg z can vary. And then you realize, well, I want the part that gives me the smallest angle and the biggest angle. Now, several of you selected this spot right here. 
it's uh, vertically beneath the uh, center of the circle, right? Which is not a bad guess. Like that certainly gives you a smaller angle than like one of these spots, right? But it doesn't give you the smallest angle. It doesn't give you the smallest argument. What is the spot that I need to choose? Xiao? Uh, so the tangent of the circle that passes through the origin. The, the, ta the tangent to the circle that passes through the origin? Yeah. Okay, now this is interesting, right? Because what you just described to me, and I want you to think about this, right? The tangent to this circle that passes through the origin, that seems ambiguous to me. Because I can think of, for any point anywhere outside the circle, I can think of two tangents that will go through that point and will meet the circle, right? Can you think, and maybe on your diagram you've got these already, right? There's a tangent that's going to actually go up this way, and that's going to give you the greatest argz, and then you got the one that Zhao was trying to get at first, this lower one, which will give us the lowest. Okay? So in fact, and you really need to do this accurately, so much so that I'm actually going to pull out the rule for this, right? You need to do this carefully because if you actually have something that is a decent circle, even on the strength of your diagram, you should see it's close, but it's not exactly at that, that bottom most part of the circle. Do you see that? Right? In fact, as I draw it now, let me see if I can do this accurately enough. Do you see that? What's my argument? Uh, sorry, what's my logic? Answer, my logic is the diagram, right? You can even see right there. It's only, I can only do this because my diagram is like halfway decent to be able to use that as a point. Now, that's where this uh, circle property, which I told you you'd need to sort of rest on, is going to help you out. That tangent is perpendicular to the radius at point of contact. What does that let you do when you know you've got a right angle here? What does that enable? Have a think. Pythagoras theorem, theorem again, but this time no, 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 in, well, I mean, you actually don't need Pythagoras theorem, you can use it, but um, I've already got this distance here, right? It's the radius, okay? Um, because Ang has helped us do this via, for the mod Z, I've already got the opposite and the hypotenuse for the actual um, angle over here, which is going to help us be our sort of step to getting what argz is for this point. Does that make sense? Uh, this is not an accidentally chosen triangle, by the way. What is that theta down there? It's going to be pi on six. six? Pi on six, right? Because this is the one, two, root three triangle. This is just sine theta equals a half, right? So I'm going to put in, I'll get this out of the way, that's equal to pi on six, right? Now this angle here, theta, it's actually not the one I want. What is the, where is, I should say, not what, where is the arg z that I'm after to give me the lowest value? Yeah, it's just underneath that pi on 6, right? So in fact, and you need to have this clearly marked in in your diagram, this is the actual angle that I want. How do I find it? Go ahead, Calvin. Do like a pi over, what is it, like 4 minus pi over 6? Pause. Pi over 4. Pi over 4. Calvin just said pi over 4, which we need. Where did it come from? Where is pi over 4 here? Jiayu? Because we know that from the center, it's actually root through power root through. Yep. So this guy it's here. actually a 45 degree, which is pi yeah. over there. Yeah, fantastic. So this triangle here, which um, Anger used to help us get this 2, right? It's a, it's an isosceles triangle. So you've got pi on 2 here, pi on 4 in the corners. So coming back to Calvin now, there's the pi divided by 4, and he is subtracting the pi over 6. Is that okay? So that gives you a lower bound, I hope. Pi over, pi over 4, subtract pi over 6, that gives you pi over... 12, right? So that is our lower boundary for argz. Now I'm going to pause here, right? At this point, hopefully you realize why I had to say the principal argument. I'm now asking for a maximum value, right? Yeah. If you don't restrict yourself to the principal argument, the you can just make it anything you like. You're like, I want my angle to be bigger. I'll just rotate a few more times around, right? So I'm clearly only looking for the principal argument to this other tangent that I'm going to have up to here. That was not bad by hand. That, I'm not going to be able to do that next time. Um, how do you find this one? How do you find this one? You gave us a good answer for this one, Calvin. Can someone else help us reason to get to up there, Varen? Yeah. In fact, does this ring a bell? Do you remember how we went from here and we added subtracted? Do you remember that, right? It's exactly the same logic to go from here 
and then we add or subtract the relevant size of the angle. This time it's pi on 4 and we add pi on 6 to get to the next one. Pi on 4 plus pi on 6, that's 5 pi on 12? Yeah. Do I remember it right? Happy times. Okay, so this is not really like a separate category of question. This is, do you understand how the graph works? And then can you think of like, like your trigonometry and Pythagoras from stage four, stage five, stuff you learned a long time ago, but maybe just this a little dusty in your head.